This is a 2021 Bianchi Specialissima, and in this video, I'm going to review it. Starting with how it rides, go through the frame and equipment details, some likes and dislikes, and my verdict at the end of the video. But in short, I can tell you the performance of this bike is nearly flawless. It really is that good. And despite the iconic Celeste color, it's not a bike weighed down by a company's history and heritage. It's packed full of modern details, as you'd expect of a race bike in 2021. So let's dive in. And it rides just as well, if not better even, than it looks. So yes, the bike certainly lives up to its name, price, and a company's heritage when you ride it. It's just one of those bikes that sweeps along the road with near effortless grace. However, it still feels urgent when you're pushing the pedals and the handling is direct when you get into the corners. But it's just a lack of noise, fuss and drama that compels you to stay out for a few more miles or hours. The smoothness really surprised me. I expected with a 25 mm wide tires that the ride would be firm. That wasn't the case. It manages to smooth out my most poorly surfaced roads with ease and isn't flustered on the most broken tarmac. Don't let this smoothness fool you into thinking it's a lazy long distance cruiser though. It's a fast bike. Yes, it might not feel electric in the way it covers the road, but the speed is definitely there as clearly as my bike computer shows me. There are many trends in the road bike market these days. We've got aerodynamics, we've got wider tires, we've got disc brakes, and we've got integration. And this brand new Specialissima ticks all those boxes but it does so in a way that retains the elegance and the beauty of the original and the Bianchi way of doing bikes and looks much nicer in my opinion than some of the more futuristic looking road bikes in the market at the moment. Part of the reason for the bike's silky smoothness on my local rough roads is the countervail technology. I know it sounds like some black magic, doesn't it? But it's quite a clever carbon fiber technology where they add a special material, they're very guarded around the actual details of that material within the carbon fiber layup and it's designed to dampen vibrations that usually come up through the frame and fork and into your contact points and lead to a rough jittery ride, which I can tell you really does work. This bike, despite only wearing 25 mil wide tires, is as smooth as some bikes with 28 or even 30. So it almost gives you the benefits of a bigger tire without actually going to a bigger tire and extra weight of a bigger tire and the tire clearance issues as well. And it's a technology that's unique to Bianchi as well. They've been doing it for quite a few years. First introduced on their Infinito endurance bike back in 2015 or thereabouts. Then their Ultra Aero bike. And then the first generation Specialissima and their second generation one as well. The other big change on the new Specialissima is the nod towards aerodynamics. So if you want an Aero Bianchi, you choose the Ultra XR4. It's a pure Aero race bike. When the Specialissima first launched, it was a pure traditional round tube bike, very elegant and traditional, designed to be as light as possible. Well, the new frame, as you can see, has been given an aero makeover and it really finesse the profile of the tubes, the down tube especially, the head tube junction, the fork blades, and the seat tube and seat post, and the seat clamp is now internal as well. So it's not a full aero makeover, it's a bit of a nod towards aero, really put an aero where they can without adding too much weight. And a frame, despite the aero and that counterfeit technology, is actually lighter than the old frame, 750 versus 780, although the fork has gone up from 350 to 380. But still a very lightweight frame and definitely up there, or down there, should I say, with some of the lighter frames in this top end market. Lighter than a Tarmac SL7, say, and about the same weight as a top end giant TCR Advanced SL. And yes, this bike isn't super lightweight at 7.5 kilograms without pedals for a size 55, but it's no slouch on the climbs, at least with me on it. There's ample frame stiffness, so when you're cranking hard out of the saddle, it feels taut and direct. And with a 750 gram frame weight, there's probably potential to go even lighter, and I reckon a sub seven kilogram weight should be achievable. And if weight really matters to you, there's even a lightweight black paint frame option that saves another 80 grams if you're happy to forego the Celeste. But not once riding this bike did I ever feel the weight was holding me back. Let me point out some likes and dislikes and we'll start with the most obvious one, the iconic Celeste paint color on this bike here. 
And while I totally get why Celeste is such a popular color with so many people, personally, it doesn't really do much for me. Yes, I like it, but I wouldn't choose it over any other color. You may feel differently, and I'm sure you let me know in the comment section down below, but other colors are available. But many people will tell you, and they told me, if you're choosing a Bianchi, you have to have Celeste. It's almost the law. Color aside, what I really do like on this frame is the holographic outline for Bianchi logo. I think they look really good. And I love the proper head badge on the head tube. I take that and the weight penalty over a lighter weight transfer that is popular on most modern road bikes these days. And while the new bike isn't quite as pretty as the old bike, it's still a pretty bike and it definitely turns heads. I'll be riding it for the last few weeks. I get more glances and admiring nods on their bikes that pretty much all our bikes I've been riding for the last couple of years. So if you like attention, this is a bike for you. Integration or full internal cable routing, one of the big trends in the road bike market at the moment. With most new bikes going down the route, as we have with a Specialissima, of putting all the cables and hoses inside the handlebar, stem and frame. It does divide opinion. Some people love it, some people hate it. The comments on my giant TCR review last year really opened my eyes to how passionate many of you are about internal versus external cable routing. And I must admit, it gives a really clean looking front end. No cables or mess here. And there's no compromise when you're riding, no restriction on turning the handlebars. And there's still plenty of adjustment. You can change the handlebar, you can change the stem, you can adjust the stack height as well, as you can see. Compared to some systems, they have one piece handlebar and stems where you have no control over the width of the handlebar or the length of the stem. So quite a nice solution. I haven't taken it apart yet, but if you're a mechanic and you have, let me know what it's like to work on down below. One of the big changes to his new bike, as you can see, is the fact it's disc brakes only. There is no longer a rim brake version on the Specialissima platform. But personally, as a fan of disc brakes for their superior performance and reliability with no downsides apart from a weight penalty perhaps, it's not an issue for me, although I know many of you feel more passionate about the move to disc brakes on not only this bike, but many top end road bikes in the road bike market at the moment. So we have disc brakes, flat mount calipers, hoses inside the frame and fork, and 12 mm through axles front and rear. The bike has a really neat trick up its sleeve that I've not seen on a road bike before, though I have seen it on a mountain bike in the past. It's within the through axle, is a T-bar lever that you pull out and then you use that to undo the through axle. And then simply do it back up and push it back inside. So really simple, no tools needed, really quick. So good for rapid wheel changes. Great for Simon Yates in the pro bike races. But here in the real world, I always carry a multi-tool. So the benefit, the advantage it offers is um, less important. But as clever a solution as it clearly is, I dislike the way it pokes out of the frame and the fork, just a bit ugly. I'd rather it was flush fitting with the frame and fork like a regular through axle is, although it does require a multi-tool, but that's a small price to pay for cleaner looks in my opinion. But it's quite a clever solution. But let me know what you think down below. One of the big benefits of disc brakes is the increased tire clearance it allows on a frame and fork design. Although the new bike is limited to a 28 officially, so not as generous as a 30 or 32 we're seeing on some road race bikes. But thankfully, that countervail technology I talked about earlier is so good at smoothing out rough roads, you almost don't need a wire tire. And I was very happy with 25s on this bike. So that is a way around the limited tire clearance on this bike compared to other bikes. You almost don't need a wire tire. It is so smooth as it is. The geometry is pure race bike. And for comparison, the numbers are very close to something like a specialized Tarmac SL7. The Bianchi has a slightly slacker head tube angle, which gives a degree of extra calmness, which shows at high speed. Through the corners, the Bianchi feels crisp, sharp, and really change direction at the slightest input. But without the razor sharpness from some race bikes, that can be alarming if not ready for it. The Specialissima might have entered the world as a lightweight climbing focus bike, but its new version is a much more rounded all round option. Sure, it's perhaps not as light as it could be, but it still climbs fast, it's fast on a flat road, and it has comfort and easy handling to make it a hugely satisfying bike for the longest epic rides. So what it really is, is a supreme grand tour bike. Yes, it has the geometry numbers to be just fine on a tight and demanding criterion circuit, but it's the way it handles big rides 
over all types of road surfaces with a lightness on the climbs and disc brake control on the descent that makes it such a beautiful bike to ride. It rides as well as it looks. The bike certainly commands a price that's well in line with other top end flagship bikes from rival bike manufacturers. Now the cheapest route to ownership of a Specialisma is buying a frame set for £4,500 or you can buy a Shimano or Tegra equipped bike for £5,700. This bike here with all the bells and whistles and dripping in carbon fibre costs £12,735. In this top end build, the Specialisma is undercut by most of its main rivals, although arguably at this price point, there's not really much in it. A few pounds here or there, and the sort of person buying the bike probably won't be swayed by another bike because it's a little bit cheaper. Now, of course, I'm not gonna crouch here in the middle of the road and try and justify that big price tag to you. But what I will say is that this bike makes a compelling case against those main rivals. The performance is first class, the smoothness is out of the world, the steering, the balance, the way it looks, then all that history and heritage. There's a lot to like here, and it really is a worthy rival to most other bikes in this sort of price range and offering what the Bianchi does, a kind of lightweight, disc brake, integration, clean looking road bike. You do at least get lots of very nice top end kit and there's nothing you need to change on this bike at all. So there's that. And I do feel really spoilt riding around on a bike with super record EPS and carbon wheels and a really nice finishing kit. This is Campagne Yodo's top end flagship group set and I will do a separate review on the channel very soon. So watch out for that. So I won't go into too much detail here, but we'll give some impressions of the group set based on quite a few weeks of riding. Firstly, it's electronic and 12 speed. Thankfully, I've got a compact, but you might prefer a 5236 or 5339 for that full race experience. But I was quite happy with the lower gears for my local Cotswolds climbs. So like Shimano and SRAM, it's electronic shifting with hydraulic disc brakes. But the way it operates and the way it feels on the road is very different to Shimano and SRAM. Firstly, the shifting. It's much quieter than the whiz and whir get from Shimano and SRAM. And I like that about the bike. I like a bike to be quiet, and this definitely is quiet. The brakes are also very different to Shimano and SRAM, and not as aggressive in the way they deliver the power as those other group sets. There's still that outright power when you really need to stop very quickly, and you can stop very quickly on this bike, no problems there. But it's the way the brake lever feels when you're applying power, that is just out of this world. It's much smoother, much softer almost. Got a really nice natural feel. There's loads of modulation. This group set is a king of modulation, no doubt about it. And it's almost akin to a really well set up, really dialed rim brake bike, which is not something I thought I'd be saying about a disc brake bike. And then there's the way it looks, all carbon fiber, the levers, the crank set, the front mech and the rear mech, very indulgent. The rest of the equipment is all top notch too. The Physique Argo Vento short nose saddle is supremely comfortable. I really got on well with the saddle. The Vittoria Corsa tyres are fast rolling and the Fulcrum Win 400 wheels offer a good ride quality with a 40mm profile, a good match for the Bianchi's all round appeal. It's a shame not to have Campagnolo wheels to match the Campagnolo group set and I found the performance of the bike was boosted by the Bora Ultra WTA wheels I reviewed, link above if you missed that. But also boosted was the price. So yes, it's an expensive bike, but then so many top end bikes these days. But if you crave something Italian, something a little bit special, then this new Bianchi Specialisma really does deliver. Speed, comfort, handling, looks, history and heritage. It is a fantastic bike and easy to fall in love with. And if I had the money, if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would definitely buy it. It truly is that good. Although I'd probably go from the lower spec models and get the same frame and save a bit of money or make it more affordable. Anyway, that has been my review of the 2021 Bianchi Specialisma. Great questions, put them down below. But hopefully you enjoyed this review. And if you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you all again next time. Thank you for watching.